My name is Josephine and I am a fiber artist. Everyday life inspires me. I could walk down the street and see flowers that are pretty and I'll take a picture and then I'll say, hey, I want to work on something that's burgundy and yellow. Uh, it could be my flower garden in the morning. Um, sometimes I come out here and I look at my flowers. Uh, um, go online a lot, you know. There's a couple of artists that I like to look at their work. Uh, sometimes I go on and I look at Pinterest and I, you know, develop my own little creative boards for, uh, I have color inspirations that I do, I have art inspirations that I do, um, so it could be a piece of art in a museum or a piece of art that I see online that I might be inspired by, but um, I'm generally inspired by color, just color in general. We decided one day we wanted to go to sewing classes, so there was a local center and I, so I asked my mom and, and I asked my dad if I could um, go. So they said, sure. So then my dad went out and bought me a sewing machine. And that's when I got started. Working with my mom when I was a kid. My mom used to do needlework. She also sewed a lot, so my earliest memories are sitting down with her and working on a project she was doing for the bed, which was basically needlework. That's my earliest memory. My dad was basically a hands-on guy. He was a mason, so um, growing up as a child, he was basically building, he built a lot of things, you know. He was involved in building shopping centers. Um, houses. Um, he was a mason, so in my mind he could build anything. So he was basically one of my earliest influences. I remember as a child he bought us an encyclopedia, right? And so I went to the encyclopedias and the main thing that I was focused on was the one book that had all the arts and crafts in it. So I remember learning how to um, sit down and trying to carve something, you know, and I used to go into that. I taught myself how to knit back then. I taught myself how to crochet from these little books. My grandmother, I didn't know on my father's side, but basically my dad told me he'd come from a line of seamstress and tailors, which was um, his mom and his aunt, who basically sewed from scratch. They didn't use patterns, and basically they just sewed everything for everybody. My father, I guess, along the way picked up some of that because as a child, I remember once he wanted to make, he used to be a part of this lodge, and he wanted to make a, um, a daishiki. So a daishiki is like one of those big flowing type gowns, right? So he said he wanted me to make one for him. And I said, Dad, I don't have a pattern for that because I had learned how to sew with pattern. So he said, you don't need a pattern. Let me show you how to do it. So he basically showed me how to lay it out, and, and I sewed him up a daishiki just like that. So he taught me that you don't need a pattern for everything. Follow your heart. If there's something that you want to do, um, don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. Um, I've been fortunate um, to have the support of my husband behind me, um, my family. Um, I think my family has always been supportive in my art. high school um, I thought about studying design and at that time I wasn't quite sure if that's really what I would study so I went to a trade school for two years um, and I studied design in the trade school it helped prepare me to enter FIT you know the teachers there were very good they helped me to work on my portfolio um, which I did a good job with and I got into FIT I started working for this consulting firm for the apparel industry and I did that for a couple of years um, and then the guy who was in charge of the consulting firm um, became president of this apparel company. And 
that's when I, I moved to the apparel company and that was basically my introduction when I started working in the industry. Um, basically we were responsible for helping them to develop the product and then in later years I started traveling. In 87 I started traveling and I used to travel like two or three times a year going overseas, working with the factories, going to the mills, looking for the fabrics they wanted. Um, and, and I would say it was a good career. There was an opportunity that it came up at my job um, for me either to stay or not to stay. And at that time, my husband and I sat down and he said to me, you know, you've really been wanting to do something on your own. Why don't you take the opportunity to do that now? And then in a year, if you don't like working for yourself, then go back to work. And I said to myself, I'm never going to do that. And that's when I started thinking about, I had actually started thinking about it before, of doing something on my own, um, but it was very difficult to do something on my own and work a full-time job. Um, one day I took a class um, to learn how to felt. And then once I started it, I came home and I said, you know what, I want to do more of this. And then I went online and I learned how to do wet felting just by going online onto YouTube. And that opened up a whole new avenue for me of art, you know, and I, I fell in love with it. I've been a quilter for years and I'm still learning. But fiber art is, is a, a new art for me and there's so much more that I can learn. Mm -hmm.